Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over spline based audio, and to give you a specific example, if you don't know what I mean, is adding sounds to a river. So, if you wanted to add sounds to a river, what you might want to do is just add in a load of cues like this. Now, this obviously isn't going to be very good because these are going to be different points in which they're louder and quieter, and you can't change the shape of the sound cue to fit this perfectly. Obviously, with a straight one like this, you can change it to a capsule, but with a curved river, you wouldn't be able to do it. So what we're going to be doing today is making it so the sound will move along so it's constantly next to player so it sounds like the audio is there throughout the whole entire river and it can be anything, it doesn't just have to be a river but basically a unique shape which you want the audio to follow perfectly. So I'm going to hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So we get in, I've got the arrow over there just to show you where the audio is and this is obviously going to be in line with the player so the closest point in which the player is to the river. So you'll notice that it's going to be following us so the audio is going to be constantly updating perfectly so the whole entire river sounds like it has audio as you can hear here instead of it just being a separate point again this is going to constantly follow it so it sounds perfect so this is what we're going to be going over and creating today so without further ado let me delete this code and i'll show you how i've done it now this one is actually rather simple so we're going to get right into it so the way i've created my river is i have already used a spline as you can see here is my river spline which i do have a video going over how to create this as well if you wanted to follow that now the code I'm about to do, you can do in this same blueprint as well, but some people don't create rivers using splines, so I'm going to create a new blueprint for this, but again you can do it in here if you wanted to, it's the same process. So if you don't have a river on a spline, what you can do is right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this one River Audio VP, opening it up straight away. Now in here we want to add a few components, I'm going to add a spline just under utility there, just a spline. And I'm also going to add an audio, with this being my river audio, which I wanted. So for me, that's river sound effect Q, like so. And we're gonna compile and save that. And I'm sure to mention, if you don't have a Q, I would recommend using one. So you can right click on your sound effect and create Q. And then in here, this is where you can have all the attenuation so you can hear it from different distances. But I imagine you've already got all of that sorted as you're in this video now. But if you don't have that, I do have another video going over that in more detail if you want it. So back here, this is all we need. However, for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm going to also add in an arrow just so we can see where it is. You don't need this, this is just for the video. And I'm going to increase this and also make it so I can see it in the game so it's no longer hidden in game like this. And once you've got in your components of a spline and audio, we're going to go over to the event graph and delete begin overlap and event tick, but use event begin play. Out of this, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character, but for you it's going to be third, first, whatever you've named it. Object is obviously going to be get player character. Then very simply out of this, what we want to do is right click as third person character, promote a variable, and name this one character reference. And this is just so we have a reference to where the player is relative to the river. We're going to compile and save that. Underneath this, we're going to right click and add a custom event, naming this one Move Audio. This is just so it's more efficient, so we're not doing it off of event tick, so it's not doing it constantly throughout the entire game, every single frame, but it will be doing it very quickly. And what I'm also going to do off of event begin play, just so I don't forget, is call function Move Audio, what we just created, so when the game begins, it's going to fire off this code. Again, I'm doing that now, just so I don't forget it later on. We'll compile and save again. Then out of the Move Audio custom event, what we want to do is again just find out where the player is relative to the river so that's where the audio is going to play. So to do that we can get our character reference so drag it in and hold control to get and out of this we're going to get actor location so again we're getting the location of the player. Now we want to drag it in our spline get it there and out of this find location closest to world location it's a very nice and simple node which basically does the work for us and the target is the spline, the world location is get actor location of the player, and the coordinate space is world, not local. So we'll compile and save that. Now if this goes the wrong way for you, you will just need to change it from world to local. I think if you're doing this in the actual river spline, it will be local. If it's in a separate blueprint, it will be world. Obviously, it's only two options. So if it's wrong, just switch it over. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit like this. Then I'm going to right click the return value and split the structure bin. And that's just because I want to mess about with the Z value a tiny bit, which I'll show in a second. So 
then I'm going to drag in my audio, get that, and set world location. Make sure it's the world, not actor, and that is going to go into move audio. Now again, for me, as I'm also doing an arrow just for the purpose of the tutorial, I'm also going to plug that one in there. But again, you do not need this if you don't want it. Then in the new location, I'm also going to right click split structure pin and the X and Y are just going to go directly in like so. So it's going to move it along the X and Y axis. Now the Z, what I want to do is come out and get a float plus a float. And I'm just going to add 50 onto this. And you might need to increase this view if it doesn't work. But the reason I'm adding 50 on is just so it's not in the ground. Because if I leave it as it is here, it will be completely on the spine point, which will be in the ground, it will be in the river, it will be inside the mesh, which means the audio won't work perfectly, it will be slightly muffled, and it will be underneath the ground, which we obviously don't want. So I'm just adding it up a little bit so it's slightly above the river, as that's where the audio would actually be coming from. So again, depending on the thickness of your mesh, because again, this doesn't have to just be for river, it can be for anything you want, you might want to increase or decrease the size of this, depending on what, what works best for you. Then after this, I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, connect it into there, with the duration being 0.05. Out of the completed, we're going to call function move audio. So this is how we're looping it instead of doing event tick. Because again, event tick does it every single frame, but with the delay, we can actually choose how quickly we want it to be, so we can increase or decrease the speed of it. So obviously the quicker this is, so the lower the duration, the more demanding it is on your PC. However, this is not demanding at all, so it should be fine. But if it's getting too demanding, just increase the duration. So you could even have it as 0.1 or even one second if you wanted. Just obviously that means that this audio might be lagging a little bit behind the player and might be jumping about a bit more than you like. But if we compile, save, close that, that is now the code completely done for us. So again, if you've already done this into your river spline, it should be set up perfectly for you. But if you haven't, you'll need to set it up like I'm about to here. So we can drag in our river audio BP, which we just created place it onto our river or again whatever it is that we want and we're just going to drag this along to fit the shape of the mesh we have. So make sure we select the little box there, hold alt and left drag out. This is now going to duplicate the spline so we now have a spline point which is going to be following the path of what we want and what we have here. So I'm just going to do this for the mesh which I have so it's going to be following the river like this. Obviously you can make it a much closer fit if you wanted but for me I'm just doing a quick one and this should work perfectly fine and work well for me. So I think something like this should be good. So now I'm going to hit play and test this out. So notice we can already hear it and it's over to the left where the arrow is. If we were to move over towards it, it's obviously going to get louder. And as we move about, the arrow and the audio is also going to move along with us and follow us like this. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so the audio is going to follow where the player is based along the shape of the mesh which we have. So it kind of gives the illusion that the whole mesh is giving off audio with a unique shape as we can see here. Again, in my example, it's a river and this works really well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.